Well, look who's back. Took you long enough. <laughs> Jared is uh, off this week. We forewarned this as his uh, one of his. Uh, he usually takes a couple of weeks off. We we allow him to break every <laughs> once in a while. As they and we could have picked a better week to have Jan back because the Florida swing starts this week, Jan. I know, and I, everybody's always excited about that because so many of the players live in Florida, so they feel like it's a home a home month. Yeah, and it is going to get really it's ramping up because you have the toughest golf course of the season so far to date, and one of the toughest golf courses, period, all season uh, this week. And then you have the signature event, Arnold Palmer, and then the players right after that. And then, of course, you're going to be at Valspar, uh, which is going to be awesome. So we're going to try to take advantage of you being there. That's kind of like your backyard uh, event, and uh, that's going to be a lot of fun as well. So this is going to be a really cool month. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. All right. And then I'm playing again in, I'm playing in April, so I'll be getting my game ready this month in March. Yes, that is awesome. Matter of fact, uh, you are participating because you, you, you were telling me off the air about this uh, this new series, uh, the Aramco Team Series, this world team event. Um, what is this again now? This is for the LPGA? This is a, this is a, a world Europe. Is this, is this sort of like, is this being sanctioned or, or, or um, uh, sponsored by uh, the, the people who sponsor Live? Yeah, it's it's sponsored by the PIF. Aramco is uh, an oil company that's owned by the Saudis. It's their major oil company, and it's part of like the, the DP World Tour, but the LPGA equivalent in Europe. So it's part of the European LPGA, and it travels around the world. I think I actually kind of think it's testing the waters for the US LPGA because that would be up for a lot more money. And I'm and again, it's a team event, but it's a different kind of team event. So that each of the top players then choose their team. They choose what who they want for their team. So the, the, the top, I think it's the top 10 money list, and then they invited 10 from the LPG, US LPGA. They get to choose a player from the rest of the field that was qualified for it. And then, then they pick one out of the hat. Oh, okay. And then there's an amateur with it. And then the event is a three-day event uh, with net, so the handy, so the handy, amateur can be part of it, and then the last day they play individual. But they, the pros keep their score on the other two days, and so it's a three-day event for them. So it's kind of, it's kind of complicated. The same as live is, you yeah, know, they, right. they really try to focus on the team event part of it, um, and they're actually going to have like, a, they're saying that it, they're going to have it at Raymond James Stadium. They're going to have a, when they do this draw, it's going to be a big deal. And you can kind of like um, NFL where you can buy the teams and you can do all kinds, you know, they're going to do the, the drawing of it, but also where you can buy teams to represent for the rest of the world. Okay. The rest of the year, because there's seven events around the world. So it's, I think they're just testing the waters with this and see, but the only problem I have with it is there are a lot of players that, that people here don't know. Now they're very sure. everybody knows them in Europe, but this is going to be on Golf Channel, so maybe it's just a kickoff to get everybody used to the names. Okay, and that, when when does this start? That starts next week, so it's next uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then Friday they make it's um, official Women's Golf Day, so they're going to have Friday all women can come out for free. So I think they're trying to introduce golf to the masses. That's awesome. And so you're going to, and what is your participation? Well, I'm going to host the ladies day, the women's day on Friday. I'm, I'll be doing interviews with some of the players and then I'll take some of the top people around, show them, you know, practice around and show them the event and what they're doing to probably teach them about pre-shot routine. What are similar things that I do in, at the Valspar is take um, customers around and sh and show them what they're what they work on and what they're looking for and what where the pin is and where they'll tee where they'll tee off from and all that kind of stuff. Okay, and who and you said the names are not household names, so uh, who would be like considered the most popular name? Probably Charlie Hull from okay. England. Okay. She plays on both tours and she's won on both tours. And so she's the most popular player right now. I think she finished second in one of our LPGA events in the US. Yeah. So she's the most popular. She's really fun. She's very pretty. 
she's she's very emotional which everybody loves and and uh and she's really a fast player so it's kind of fun <laughs> to, to watch her because everything she does is in fast motion so she's actually exciting to watch excellent all right so that is coming up uh, a week from friday uh and again on golf channel and uh, i know we're going to start getting more involved on the channel itself with uh the other tours including the lpga so by the way are you uh are you still competing on the senior tour? Yeah, I'm going to play some tournaments this year. We've got a couple of new team events because the names on a, on a lot of the names that are that are getting old, like myself and Nancy Lopez, we're almost getting too old to be able to compete. So now we're doing team events where they combine age. So then they have you have to play with a younger player, or the younger people have to choose one of us to play. So um, and it's great because they still bomb it. They still play a little bit on the LPGA tour. So cool. I invited Kari, but she can't play because she's going to play an opposing event in um, in New Jersey because she wants to get ready. She she really wants to play the British Open this year because it's at St Andrews, and so she said she's going to play a lot this year to get. How ready. How old is she? She's 47. Okay. So. Is the yeah. age the same as the men as far as 50? No, it starts at 45. 45. Okay. That makes sense. All right. So, yeah, we're definitely going to start uh, getting more involved uh, because right now it's just PGA Tour. We talk a little bit of live, but um, we, we definitely want to start getting more involved with the LPGA Tour and uh, everything else that goes on in professional golf. So, um, but again, with Jared out. Uh, we are going to talk uh, this week to kick things off uh, as Jan is going to fill in as the main analyst on our show this week for the Cognizant Classic in the Palm Beaches. You see the new logo up there. Uh, no more Honda. Uh, so that's uh, interesting. I'm not sure why that was the case, but sponsors, you never know why they changed their minds. But they were with the event for quite a long time, weren't they, Honda? A long time. In fact, um that, that it was kind of known as the Honda Classic because it was synonymous with Jack Nicholas's event. But Jack needed a new sponsor. He was hoping that they would become a signature event. And I think eventually that's the goal. I think the PGA um, helped him get the sponsorship. So I'm thinking that eventually, I know that Jack really wants to have both of his events be signature so that all the top players have to play because they only get, if they're, if they're signature events and they're in the top 50 money list, or FedEx points, they only can get one exemption of the signature events. They have to commit. That's one of the reasons that this PGA offers us so much money and that is that they have to play those events. Because last year, Rory missed two and he got fined $3 million. Why did he miss two? Was it just because uh, well, think... he, was, he was playing horrible. Oh. And uh, I think he didn't really, I think he just kind of wanted to reset his game and and uh, he played, he missed, I think he actually missed the cut the week before and there okay. were two signature events in a row. And he just, I think he just wanted to, you know, I, I, he came back with a new driver. So whether he was trying a driver, the new driver and he didn't like it, okay. but he went to a shorter driver so he could control it because he doesn't have to, pro has a problem with distance. And he came back with a new driver. So whether he was trying one, didn't want to say it's the driver's fault because they hate that because they're getting paid a lot of money to play That's that true. equipment. Don't blame and the equipment. So, <laughs> yeah. So I think um, it might have been one of the reasons because when he did come back, he said, I've got a new driver and I love it. So that okay. kind of indicates to me he might have been trying one and didn't want to say anything. Well, uh, you know, you also wonder, wow, why wouldn't they want to play in these events? Because there's a lot of money that they could. Uh, but then again, I know they have commitments and if majors are still, of course, the biggest deal of all. And that's the thing they got to get themselves uh, prepared for. But um, yeah, you would you would think most of the guys would want to not miss more than one anyway, just because of how much money they could make. So exactly. Except the funny thing is that that uh, was something that Phil always did that I thought was an interesting concept. And I used to tell a lot of the rookies that once they did qualify for the top fifty, they'd all take the same weeks off, and like last week, and then the fields become weaker. Yeah. And when Phil ever wanted to get, was always wanting to get a top 10 and, and he would play the week before the major and he'd want to get his numbers up and his, not just the prize money, but to be up there for the FedEx. And he would play the week of tournaments and invariably wouldn't even be playing well and he'd have a top five or top 10. Now, things have changed since then because all of the players are so good. I mean, look at last week that, it, that anyone can win. Yep. 
Absolutely. And uh, we were talking about it last week that even though the field was very similar to the year before, the players were just better. They've gotten better. And then you throw in the new names. Uh, and I was going over the list with Jared uh, earlier today and it's and, 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 and went over with you as well. It's amazing how uh, the odds for the winners this year, if you average it out out of the seven events so far this year, the average opening odds uh, for each winner is 164 to one. Wow. So Nap won last week at 40 to one. That's the lowest odds for a winner this year, 40 to one. You have the 260s, Matsuyama Clark. You have 110 with Nick Taylor. You got 130 with Pavon, 350 with Dunlap, and 400 with Grayson Murray. Uh, and keep in mind, Matsuyama and Clark, and I'm going to keep talking about this until a top player wins. Uh, the fact is, is that those top players, the only reason they won is because they had one great round. So right. if they don't have a course record tying round, which they both did in their final rounds of the event, which is very rare, as you know, they're not winning and it's probably another potential long shot. So it's just been really crazy the way that this season has begun with the long shots and then the only two winners that are not considered long shots breaking course records to win events. It's just very strange. Yeah, it is. And, and, and then, play, you know, they played early, so they didn't really have the pressure. They were, you know, when you get on a momentum roll, it's it's fun to be part of that. And yeah. and especially, like you said, Sunday's a hard day to do it because that's when you make the toughest pins. Yeah. And it's when they make the course as hard as possible so that the cream will come to the top. So that it is that's an interesting point. And it'll be interesting this week, too. Yeah. Clark benefited from uh, third round, uh, the third round 60, and then it canceled the event. But yeah, Matsuyama, I mean, just taking a look at the shots that he was making, especially those back to back shots that he hit within a foot of the T at the foot of the hole. It's just, right. okay. I mean, you just, you're and they in the were zone. Really hard shots too. I mean, they're the hardest holes that they did it. He did it on. So he, he was picking up sometimes, you know, one and a half to two shots on those holes. Yeah, it was incredible. Uh, but that's, uh, that shows you how tough it is, uh, the handicap and it's getting even tougher. All right. So McElroy is the big name this week. As you, as you mentioned, there's a big drop off. You got McElroy at seven to one. Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and pop up. I'm going to screen share this with you so you could also see it and then I'll pop it up on the screen. So, uh, there it is. And I'm going to pop it up so I could, everybody can see it. And there are the odds there. So you got McElroy seven to one, uh, Young, Henley, Cole, Kim, and a whole all those other names really. They're all bunched up. I mean, it's any of these guys between twenty two to one, and uh, you could probably go all the way down to like I'd say I don't know fifty sixty to one. They're all the same. I mean, any of these guys can win, and that's why you do want to take a look at bargains. And we're going to go over that. But I wanted to use a different strategy. With, usually I have my picks all set, picks are up. Jared's already given me his picks, so I'll post them up in a little bit. But I said, you know what? With Jan on this week, I need a little bit of extra uh, mojo. So I'm going to, because we've talked about doing this before anyway, and that's getting your input on the, the golf course itself. And yes, we, we go over the trends of the golf course and, 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 and sometimes like last week with the different greens, how rare they are, which players played really good on those greens and so forth. So we can do that. But there's another uh, side to analyzing the game that we've talked about early on, and that was um, whether a player is a right to left uh, hitter or a left to right hitter. And therefore, does that benefit or make it an issue for him going to a specific golf course, being that type of hitter? So I figured, you know what? I haven't used that yet this year. Let me use that with you today. So what I'm so I tell you what, let's so let's talk about the course first before we go through the players. So talk about uh, PJ National and uh, a lot of water. So that's huge. Uh, but uh, talk about the course and also what type of uh, hitter it favors. Well, you know, typically because this golf course is so long and um, and because this time of the year it's windy down there, um, it, we've always known that March is always a windy month in Florida. We always talk about that March is windy in, in, in Florida. I always talk about when I talk about um, which places are best to live, 
And, um, and I would say that Florida is by far the best in the wintertime, except March is very windy and September can be hurricane season. So they're the only two months are iffy. So a lot depends on the wind. Last year, remember, it was really windy. And then the year before, they had this unusual rain all the time, which is very rare for South Florida in the wintertime. And they had that downpour on the last hole. Yep. So notwithstanding, the golf course is plays very long. Uh, Nicholas does not like to have low scores on his golf course. So every year, he's always added another back tee to a hole if they birdie it or run away with it. So he's, he, he does the same thing at Memorial. And... Uh, he always wants to make sure that nobody shoots really, really low or lights out. So he he's always like tweaking the golf courses. Well, and that's, a, that's a, and that's refreshing because even we were looking at Genesis, which is normally, um, yeah, it was Genesis. N normally, that is a uh, a very tough golf course. It is, but the last three years, it's been like the easy the 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 the, the, the I say easiest, but the the scoring has been. Uh, the lowest uh, over a three-year stretch ever. You had 217. I mean, Matsyam, I believe, was 17 under par. You had 217 under pars and maybe a 19 or 21. So the, the the scoring actually, even at that event, was getting a little bit low. Like So you're saying, well, is it, it can't be the golf course. So it must be the players. Players must be getting better. But... I don't, but so you tell me, why do you think, because obviously you weren't on the, the, the show a couple of weeks ago, why do you think that's the case maybe, uh, not just for the Genesis, but um, any, again, even, even uh, this event, the scoring has been a little bit lower the last few years. And again, to tell you what, the, with Riviera, the reason that it played easier is that they had so much rain that they couldn't control the, usually the greens get really firm and and hard and fast i mean the year that joaquin won um it was it the golf course was if you missed a green you, you could barely get up and down it was so hard and the rough was a little bit longer so because of the weather this year it made the course at least that you could you know, look at matsuyama with some of those shots they just stopped oh, dead that's true and yeah. normally they they have to judge they're only fairly small greens but they have to judge how much they run out and it's a lot of elevation about when and which makes it hard when you're going uphill to some of those holes i mean i love that golf course but it's hard and so you've got you know trees you so it kind of eliminates a lot of the longer hitters and then you have greens that don't hold and don't accept longer irons in so it's 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 definitely always everyone always talks about it's always been an, an iron player's golf course someone that's really good with their second shots but this year, everything was kind of receiving well because the greens were soaked. Okay. And like for, let's see, I've got, matter of fact, I think that is even in one of the trends that I have for this week was going over the scoring. Um, and uh, let's see, where are we? Uh, oh, yeah. I got to look for a Cognizant, not Honda. Okay. So uh, for instance, uh, one of the trends that I noticed, again, regarding the scoring is that... Um, single digit under par winning scores um you've seen at this event in 11 of the last 17 actually 11 of 17 because they've only been playing on this golf course 17 times um but the last three again 11 of 17 single digit under par but the last three were all double figures we've seen uh 14 under 10 under and 12 under so once again, just like in Riviera, the last few years, the scoring is getting a little bit easier. Now, I don't know if it's just coincidence with, like you said, with the weather or whatever the case may be, but um, I'm just guessing it has to do with the players being better. That's all. I mean, I don't know what other excuse to make. Well, no, there's no question the depth is, is there. I mean, you already said that earlier in the show that that, you know, how do you pick anymore? It's so hard to pick the one and done and even, you know, in our, in our contest with our oh, event. Yeah. event. It's, it's so hard because they are really good. I mean, there, there's, there's very small dif differences and momentum is so big. I mean, you know, look at the, like last week with, with NAP. I mean, you get off to a good start and, and it gives you that confidence. I mean, I always won wire to wire because it just gave you that little bit extra where you think, oh, it's my week. And, and they need it so desperately for the rest of their season. So um, they, they take advantage of that. But they're so much more aggressive, you know, and, and I think that's what they were trying to do with changing the ball, you know, for the future is that 
they've taken away a lot of the spin, so they don't hit the shots as crooked. And so I think that's really all they have to do with the ball is add spin more to it because, you know, they, then it makes it hard because if you do hit it offline in on the club, it's not going to spin out of control. All right. Well, let's – so so really if, 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 if I was – if somebody was asking me, hey, what kind of golf course or what's the – what makes this a tough golf course? All I got to say is it's long. You got to deal with the wind conditions and there's a lot of water. There's a lot of water and the last finishing holes are so hard. You know, it's called the bear bear trap because they are, if you, you get trapped, if you hit one bad shot coming down the stretch, it's really, you're struggling. I mean, even the last hole, which is a birdie hole, it's a par five and reachable par five for them. But if you miss hit your drive, like last year, um, Kirk miss hit his drive and he had to lay up. And so you so this water all down the right side, 17 is all carry and it's a really hard carry. If you get any of that crosswind, which happens a lot at this time of year, especially down there. And so it makes it, it, it you know, if you've got the lead or if it's better, well, it's okay if you've got the lead because you can be a little bit. You more, can hit it in the, in the sand. Deep. Yeah, you can be defensive yeah. and just play for the middle of the green and not because they always have the pin on the right on 17. And, you know, and you've got to carry all that water. And if you just hit, squeak it a little bit, you're in trouble. And, you know, and that's the thing is that that golf course, it's much easier to play leading and being defensive than it is for someone trying to catch. Hmm. Let me see, taking a look at the trends for where winners come from. Uh, let's see here. Just going into the final round. How about this? This goes exactly what you're saying. 16 of the 17 all-time winners of this event on this golf course started the final round either in first or second place. That wow. is crazy. 16. And you know what? I think it would have been 17 if it hadn't have been for that downpour because Shane Lowry was leading that year and didn't win. Because well, the second place, uh, actually, it was Straka who won that that year you're talking about. Yeah. He was five back, but he was in second place. So he so that stayed that that that, that stat stays the same. You were either first or second. Right. The only player that wasn't first or second that won was Sung J M back in 2020 when he was in fifth place, and he was just three shots back though. So just like you're saying, forget about trying to come from behind. When you're in the final round and you're doing live betting, forget about it. Just don't even do it because you're not going to make any money live betting at this week's event. That's true. The so. only thing is that, again, you know how you and I, the two things that I, that I harp about that players talk about more than anything is tea times and weather because those two things you can't control – especially the first two days, you know how you have to have one early, one late. Yes. Um, and and it, when it, it really matters more, probably, you know, like in, in Europe and in, in Britain, okay. because you get such huge changes in the weather. In the summertime, it's usually you, can, you get, you might get a thunderstorm or something and you get a rain delay and then that messes things up. But, you know, it's just look, look at Wyndham. I mean, he, he, um, he basically got it given to him because of yes. the weather. So weather and and uh, tea times are huge. Okay. So bottom line is with that is um, make sure you check the weather forecast <laughs> on Wednesday um, and then the tea times because if the forecast says it's going to be windier in the afternoon on Thursday, but the winds will die down in the afternoon on Friday – then you want the player that's going to go out in the morning on Thursday and the afternoon on Friday. That kind of deal. That Yeah, but the thing is, I, th- I think if you go by what you're saying, what we've been saying is it might be, it might be good to be an early late um, around this time because if you got off to a bad start, if you get off to a good start, you can hang in there to make the cut. But if you're trying, if you're playing late on Friday and you have to, come to the, down the stretch to make the cut it's going to be hard yeah let's see um taking a look at where winners come from after round one seven of the last 13 started outside the top seven so about 50 percent lately have started outside the top seven after round one so that's good matter of fact that includes being in 24th place 27th place 63rd place and 65th place so even though 
you can't come from behind on Sunday. You can come from behind after round one. And again, that's probably a lot to have to do with the weather is that maybe you get off to a bad start because you just had a bad luck weather draw, but you come back the next day and you got a much better weather draw and you're able to come back and, and put yourself in good position for the weekend. Well, that indicates a late early would be better if that's the case, because if you got, you know, the first day, um, you might get off to a bit of a bad start, but you've got the better weather in the morning to, to make it up. Because yeah. if you're maybe it might be better this time to actually be a late early. Yeah, because only two winners have ever led after the first round. Yeah, that's it. Two out of 17. That, was, that would mean that they played early late. So, yeah. All right. And then after the second round going into the weekend, all 17 winners started the weekend inside the top 10. Um, and then again, uh, so the bottom line is once you go to the weekend, you got to be in the top 10 and you better be first or second on Sunday. So Yeah, it's too hard to make up coming down that stretch. I mean, you, you actually, I know a lot of their goals is to be just one over in the last five holes, which is pretty amazing for men, for the oh, pros. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's kind of surprising because you'd say that, well, some of the players, it's a tough golf course and they don't really want to show up for a tough golf course. Um, that surprises me a little bit only because I would think that it would prepare you better for the tougher golf courses down the stretch. I mean, but that's just me. I don't play the game. But why do you think that is? Why do you think – is that just because, well, yeah, but it's tough and I might not put myself in a position to make money. Is that what it's about is just money that they don't want to go to a tough golf course? No, not at all. No, it's because – well, number one, Bay Hill is just as hard. Okay. Um, and it's twice as much money. So um, that makes – and plus you remember that this this stretch, they're going to have pretty much the fifth major. So you've got DPC, yep. um, which is another hard golf course. And so they're, they're not they're, all of the golf courses this stretch are tough. Even, okay. Even Innisbrook, you know, is they don't have low, low scores there because the course plays long. And again, you know, you're in Florida, so there's always a lot of water. And you know, with water, it's you can't escape. You rarely can get away with just a bogey. Yeah. So really, it's just timing on the schedule is really all yeah. it is. It, it has nothing yeah. to do with anything else. Okay. No. All right. I mean that, and, and a little bit with money, but it's that they're, they're all the courses are tough enough i don't think that's the problem and in actual fact it it's it's just i think it's timing it, it really more than anything because if they want to take two weeks off you know they're home now i mean i just looked at the top 10 and every one of them has a base in in florida oh are the top 10 of the odds yeah okay interesting well let's go Actually, over that it's even more than that so every one of those guys bases in florida Okay. Well, let's go over the because. All right. So, what does the course favor? Right to left or left to right hitters? Uh, it's a left to right golf course all the way. It's um, it's you know I say that and then look at Eric Cole and and, and Kirk. <laughs> but why they're um, both right to left hitters? Yeah, they're both right to left. But okay. Kirk hits it fairly straight, and Eric hits everything clearly with the right to left. Um, but again, the golf course calls for, you know, there's certain holes you can miss it left. I mean, you look at 17 and 18, you're better if you do miss it left because there's water right. And so I say that, but it, everybody knows that Jack Nicholas favors left to right coming in from the left side with all of his holes. His green's shaped that way. So even if you miss it, you've got a much easier shot coming in from the left side. It's just the way it is. And so he loves his golf courses to be left to right. His bunkering is very difficult on this golf course. So you actually have to have um, a really good bunker game here because the bunkers are really tough. They're well-placed. I mean, I felt like when I've played there, and, and I'm a good bunker player, but I, I had some impossible shots. So they it makes you play away from the pin. And, you know, the, 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 the saying is that Jack was never a good bunker player, so he tries to punish all of this so, because he wants to make sure you can't get up and down from the bunker. If you can't do it, neither can you. Uh, so does that mean that if I'm looking for a stat, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to look them up while, while we're doing this. So if I'm looking for a stat, do I care more about uh, sand saves or scrambling? Oh, they're both good ones. I think both of those are probably pretty even. Yeah. I mean, 
the thing is you're they're better off in the bunker than chipping but there's some hard chip shots there so okay yeah the sand said would be more important and this is probably one of the courses even though it favors left to right off the tee um it might be one where and this is probably why those two guys did so well last year is that both have fabulous short games i think okay. eric is one of the best bunker players out there and and one of the best putters clearly him and and kirk so um i think that that chris I, chris kirk played a great shot on 18 you know after he sniped his drive left because he wanted to stay away from the water because he was leading or tied yeah and um he was tied for the oh in the playoff um and Eric hit a great drive, but he hit it long into the bunker, and he didn't get up and down. He had a hard bunker shot. All right. Before I look at those stats, let me I mean, look. Some you know trends. Um, I often say we, we use a whole bunch of different tools to 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 figure out um, the best way of handicapping events, and um, but sometimes you look at them and you go, well, I don't know why it's that way but it just is and what i'm saying is is that like what happened last year why say two right to left hitters were the, the top two that year so maybe that's also a trend so let's take a look at the the, the recent winners and you tell me how they how they play so you've got sep straka sep hits it pretty straight he does okay. have a little bit of a fade um on his most of his shots so uh, but his miss is left. It's funny because he hits a fade, but whenever he misses it, he misses it left. Okay. And then Lowry, who who got screwed by the weather that year and had to lead and should have won because he was up by five strokes, um, how, what kind of hitter is he? Same thing as Sep. He hits it. Well, he hits a little bit of it right to left, but he can hit a really good fade when he has to. I, I actually think his game suits this golf course. And he's staying at home because he moved to South Florida for the um, and with his family last year. So I'm sure he's settled in, and he's actually going to be. When you think about it, he's actually getting his two weeks off. Okay, uh, Matt Jones. Do you know mm. Matt Jones' uh, game? Yeah, yeah, Matt Australian. Is, um, yeah, he's he hits it uh, right to left. Interesting. There you go. Uh, Sung J M. Sung J M hits it. Probably as straight as anybody. I mean, okay. his ball strikes. I mean, people talk about it. he hits it really straight. He misses it left when he misses it, but he hits it. He hits it really. His ball comes out very straight. So, I mean, you better hit straight anyway on this golf course. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Keith, Keith Mitchell. Keith hits it left to right. Okay. So um, he's a good one for there. Justin Thomas. Justin hits it right to left, but he's working the ball more left to right this year. And Ricky oh, is Fowler. Justin playing? No, this is uh, Justin. I'm going over the defend the defending oh. champs. And Ricky Fowler. Ricky hits it right to left. Okay, and Adam Scott. Adam Scott hits it right to left. Isn't that interesting? I mean, that You're that's right. why After I want to. It's crazy. That's actually an interesting point because I've always said that golf course sits left to right is because everybody always talks about. You know, Jack favors left to right, but that's, you know, what I think the reason is, especially that golf course, is because all the trouble's on the right side. Um, so, you know, if you miss hit your shots, you want to be coming in from the left side. So maybe that's why. You see, that's there an you interesting go. Point. There you go. See, we're, we're figuring it out. Uh, that's why I'm saying sometimes you you, you don't it, it's not so black and white and you got to figure these things out you got to that's why the trends are important so let me take a look then just last year let's see I'm gonna take a look at uh, where would I let's see I'm looking at well let's see what about look at sand saves and and start and and um and, and it because everyone always says it's it's a hard golf course to get up and down from but if with so much trouble right that you've got to look for scrambling. So I'm under scrambling here. Let's see. But this is last this is this year. Let me take a look. So last year I just want to look at look at last year because I want to take a look at the winner last year was uh, Kirk and then Cole. So let's see where they were in scrambling last year. Kirk and Cole. Let's see. Do we see Kirk and Cole here for scrambling? Cole, 28th. 
And Kirk, 41st. So that's good. They were both in the top 50 uh, for scrambling. Keeping in mind, of course, the top players, a lot of them aren't, aren't going to be playing here. So overall, they're, they're probably two of the better in that position. So let's take a look at this year's. I know it's early, but let's just see. Anybody that's here. Alex Noren. And Noren was someone that I came really close to thinking of taking, actually, because he has two top fives here. Oh, wow. So I think Noren is someone to keep an eye on. There's Kirk again. Uh, Justin Rose, I'm taking this week. There's Justin. He's 12th. There's Cole again. There's Russell Hendley. He's one of the favorites. You got McCarthy's playing. You got Pendrith playing. Tom Kim. So there you go. You got Postons having a really strong year. Yeah, Poston's a good one. He's he's a he's got a great putting stroke. Maverick McNeely, who I, who I took last week, and I'm thinking of taking again this week. Yeah, now Mav's playing well. He's got now he's got that new coach. He's his injuries better. He's he's in love. He's happy. Oh. He's in love. Okay. Well, that could be good, but, you know, uh, in love is good, but getting married, working on the wedding, that could be bad. That could be No, he's, that's too early on. For it's that. Too early. That's good. So yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll try to take advantage of that until, until the big day comes. Uh, and then you've got Gim, who's starting to play really well. Yeah, he is, finally. There you go. He's 40. He's in this, uh, this uh, in good range there. So there you go. The, oh, and Hostler is there, too. And Hostler's playing really well. Yeah, Bo's playing well. And what about um, Shane Lowry? Yeah, I didn't even see him while we were doing this. So let's, That's not a good point because yeah. I wanted to take him in the one and done. Oh, yeah. His game, though, overall, he has not been playing well. Let's see. Boy. Have I? Did, I didn't miss him, did I? Let's see. I'm getting really further down here. Shane Lowry. I don't think I missed him, did I? For his sake, you hope he, I did. There he is, 134th mm. in scrambling. That's not good. No, that's not good. All right, so let's see. I got to look for where is the – where do they put that in uh, the section of – scrambling as far as the um where do they put sand saves it should be it should be there let's see unless it's in the scrambling let's see driving distance strokes gained approach to green greens are regulations scrambling let's see i don't have anything to, let's see if i click that i don't let's see i don't see anything else here to go to there's no other options here huh that's interesting they just lump them all together Around the green. Let me see if that helps. Strokes gained. No, I can't find it here. So, see, this this is the stuff that uh, Jared's good at. <laughs> PGA Tour, they give you this for free, so you get you know it's it's good information, but it's not. Oh, right, here we go. Here's some of this. There we go. Sand save percentage. Which one should I go to? It's percentage or yeah. or any of these others? Percentage. Percentage is fine. Okay. So we're at percentage. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on a second. I'm not sure anybody can see this on the screen. Sorry about that. Let me right. get this because I made it bigger for the odds one, and I didn't change this one. Let's see. There you go. Wait. Oh, I know what I did wrong. I blew up the screen. There you go. That's a lot easier. Let me make sure I increase that again. All right, here we go. All right, that's much better. Okay, so let's see. The players that are playing this week, sand saves. Uh, I'm not seeing anybody yet. Chesson Hadley, who actually has been making a lot of cuts lately. Mm -hmm. uh, Russell Henley, who won this event before. Andrew Novak, I'm thinking of taking as my top long shot this week. Huh. So he's in that, Novak. Uh, there's Lucas Glover. That's one of Jared's picks this week. Uh, Hoagie is another one of Jared's picks this week. Yeah, I like Tom. I think he's good for this golf course. He has, he keeps it in play. There's Justin <laughs> And now again. if you think about it, now you go back, instead of being a left-right hitter, it's got to be the people that control their balls. So it's going to, you know, you think about Kirk and um, Chris and Eric, they both are shorter hitters. I mean, they still hit it long enough, but they but they are always in play. Okay, 
Let's see. So that changes. So I was thinking of Shane, but now I'm thinking Ben on. He's hitting it further now, but I was lacking him too. It's, I'm going to change and do someone that's – I can see why Russell Henley's a favorite because he's another one that keeps it in play. He's like JT Poston. Yeah, Poston's here. Uh, by the way, Jared also has on on his picks. Uh, there's Pendrith. Uh, let's see. There's him. And, uh, yeah, so that's about it. Not a lot of other really good sense. Sans- what about Matt Fitzpatrick? Uh, that is actually uh, Jared's top pick. He's 71st right there, 71st. And he is the top pick for Jared this week. I think he's staying at Shane's house. Oh. Okay. I didn't see Jaeger in either one, which disappoints me because I really, I wanted to, I was thinking of taking Jaeger this week. Yeah. And he's, I was thinking too, cause he's starting to play really well, but I don't see him. I didn't see him really in the other one either. There he is. 110th in sand saves. And then what did we, let me go back. What did we have for. Scoring now I'm thinking we go back to who hits the most fairways scrambling rather than the left to right and the right to left that's what's we'll, we'll do that next what, let's see where jaeger is let's see if i missed jaeger because if i don't see jaeger high up here i'll probably skip him this week yep there he is 60th that's not too bad all right what was that what was that uh, who hits it uh, so let's see so let's do fairways hit so let's do uh approach greens and regulation which one? I don't no, know. No, the accuracy on the on the tee shot. I don't know. Uh, where do they put it? Let's see. It's got. So it usually somewhere. goes distance and then percentage fairways okay. hit. Let's try that one. And see if it's on the. Where would that be? Off the tee. There you go. All right. So what are we looking for? Fairways, percentage of fairways. Okay. Usually, it's usually like 67% is leading. Percentage of yardage. No. Distance. Accuracy. There we go. Yeah. Uh, driver accuracy percentage. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, our last stat. Let's see what we got here. Players playing this week. Ryan Palmer's playing. All right, those are long shots. All right, let's see. Uh, Alex Norin again. Maybe I'll take Norin this week. Alex Norin is somebody I was almost putting him on my list to begin with. Uh, let's see. Berger, Daniel Berger. Hmm. There's Lowry. 15th. Giving you something to think about again. I know. Uh, there's Doug Gim. Well, I'm definitely taking Doug Gim now. I, I was picking him anyway. So I'm taking yeah. Doug Gim. There's Glover. That's uh, yeah. Lucas hits a lot of fairways. Jared's pick. Let's see. Sam Ryder might be an interesting long shot because he's had some good results here before. Uh, let's see. Post on forty three. Cole forty seven. Hubbard is also a pick by Jared this week. Yeah, he's... Mox playing well. Uh, let's see. There's Kirk. Wow. No, not many other people here. There's Rose at 70. That's not all that great. But see, the good thing is, I guess, if you're if you're having accuracy issues, if you do a good job at scrambling and sand saves, which Justin is, then he makes up for it. Yeah, right. So that's important. Because and, if you're not scrambling not well, course. what's that? Right. And it's not a golf course where you're going to shoot 20 under. True. There's Shank. He's playing this week. There's Mitchell. One of the, there's Fitzpatrick's at 77. So Fitzpatrick does not have a great combination here of, uh, what was that, sand saves, I believe, we looked at, yeah. and, um, and accuracy. But nonetheless, Jared likes him for a reason. I don't have his stats this week, though, so you'll have to wait till next week. There's Van Royen. He was there last week. But now we're starting to get to uh, the area where you really don't want to be. So anyway, so there you go. So you got a, a bunch of uh, different options to choose from. I think I'm more confused than ever now. Well, that's the way it's supposed to be. 
uh, now we've given you too much information. Yes. But that's what we're trying to do here. Uh, and it's up to everybody out there to have their own individual ideas of what you want to do. So um, I tell you what, let me – I'm going to put the picks up here. Th these are Jared's picks so you can see officially if it's Patrick on Hogue, Hubbard, and Glover. So those are his top five picks this week. By the way, I'm also – while we're making our, our up our minds on our picks, let me also throw in – Thomas, she was going to kick our ass this year after not understanding how the game worked last year. So she's living up right. to her. Uh, she has a. Uh, uh, she's got a. Um, uh, what she she has a uh, what's image to look after. So uh, I do. Yeah, I'm supposed to know about golf. So that was, um, I was so upset last week that you two. I kept thinking what I, some of the choices you were doing early on. Now I'm like, okay, I get it now. Oh, I, last I, year, I yeah. Um, okay, so. Let's go over the players then. And uh, so McElroy, the, the thing with McElroy though, and look, you're not going to make much money off of him this week. He's seven to one. He's a clear favorite. The, the, the thing with McElroy though is he historically gets off to slow starts on the PGA tour. After he starts over in Europe, he comes on, he doesn't seem to play well, but this is the first event that he's ever, this is the earliest that he's ever won. Wait, this, I'm trying to think. Yeah. Cause he won in 2012. So this is the earliest he's ever won on the PGA Tour calendar year-wise. Uh, and that might have even been a little later because this is maybe a little earlier even, I think. The yeah, it could have been because they, they've they changed the format. I mean, sometimes – I know he won at Bay Hill, and I think he won when that was – I think he used to start at Bay Hill and then go down and then come back. So. Yeah, so March or, usually somewhere. Or they'd start Doral and then go to, to Honda and then whatever. But I know he's won Bay Hill, so – um, but he came from behind. He was not playing well, barely made the cut, and then he, he had a freaky round on that Sunday and won. You know, his interesting is that McElroy started off pretty well here. He's got the win back in 2012. He lost in a playoff to Russell Hendley. But his last three appearances, 59th and two missed cuts. And this year... He's played twice on the PGA Tour, 24th and 66th. He's only got three top 15s in nine appearances here. So it's not wow. like this has been a great golf course, even though he's got a win and a playoff loss. This is actually a week to, to, to just, you know what, uh, just normally we don't ever advocate taking low numbers anyway. And this is definitely a week I'd say skip it because Rory just has not played well here lately. I don't know why, but he just hasn't. Well, I, I don't think he wants to play. I think he wants to take the time off and work on his game this time of year. But, you know, with, he lives at the Bears Club, so he lives at where Jack lives. And I'm sure Jack has said to him, you know, I really want you to, I need you to play my event for, you know, for media and for the galleries. And he's probably doing it as a favor to Jack more That's than cool. anything. And so I don't, I think he knows his course doesn't suit him. He's not, you know, he does He's kind of was warming up. He like you know he played in Europe because he had um, you know he played over in in Dubai and he's got a big sponsor there that that <clears throat> he played that. So I, he's one of those people that warms up later. And I'm sure this his focus is going to be Bay Hill, TPC, and the Masters. Yeah, because again, as we said, these next two events everybody's going to be playing. So yeah. if you play this event, you have three weeks in a row. And that's up to you. I mean, I found that interesting stat that we talked about a couple weeks ago, or it might have been last week, that Justin Thomas has never won on the PGA Tour in his third consecutive week. That's just a trend that I found out because, you know, looking over his wins and realizing, yeah, wait a second, I, he's never won on his third consecutive week. And sure enough, he was playing excellent 
And then he goes to uh, his last event, Genesis, and he's terrible in his third yeah. straight week. So maybe he maybe he wouldn't have even played it if it wasn't a, a signature event. Maybe there's Probably. something about his third week that he just he, he realizes he's just for whatever reason he needs time off after two yeah. weeks. I mean, and especially now, I'm like usually he plays this week because he's home, and um, you know basically lives around the corner. But he he's I think he's focusing on you know a, a big a big event like TPC again. They're all focusing on you know getting ready for the majors and. And he does better when he's home practicing. I think when you're playing so much, you don't get to work on your game as much. You've just kind of got to go with what you've got. And he's really worked hard towards the end of the year to get his swing better. He's flattened his swing out. He's not overturning as much. And so he's he has more control of his ball. He's a great short game player anyway, so that part he doesn't have to worry about. But he's, he works with his dad on his swing and – he probably was kind of losing it a little bit and he needed to go back and work on it some more. All right. Um, and then you pretty much, like I said before, after that, after McElroy, it's just wide open. So let's talk about, so I don't think, even though Cam's the second choice, I don't think this is a good place for Cam Young, even though he was 16th and he was even par though, when he was 16th in uh, 2022. So it's not like he had a great week. But just to show you how tough the golf course can be when you're a 16th and even par. But, yeah. yeah, I just don't think this is a good fit for Cam's game. That's just me. I don't know. What do you think? Well, you know, and then the thing is, he, I think he's going to win one of the weaker events because he's got to break, you know, the ice. And it's so hard. The pressure from everybody talking about it. You know, um, Scotty had a little bit for a while there. They kept saying he's going to be great. And then he couldn't break through. And then once he did, it was all over. Cam is a little bit different to that because Cam hits it a little bit un more uncontrollable <laughs> than Scheffler. So, uh, but he's such a nice kid. I really, you know, his family are great. His father teaches him and he works really hard. Um, I would have thought he would do better at Riviera because the golf course reminds me of Sleepy Hall in Connecticut where he grew up and, uh, and played a lot. Um, very similar looking golf course. So this one, this it doesn't wreck it. You know, it's a lot of water. If you miss hit a shot here, because he hits it a mile. And I didn't but, see his name pop up anywhere in the stats we were going over. And now he'll probably win because of that. But, of course. Um, yeah, but it's not a good golf. I agree. There's too much water on this golf course. He hits it long and wild at times. And he's getting better. But <clears throat> And he's... His short game has let him down a little bit. I think this one with the greens being grainy, he's, you know, these, these greens are grainy. I mean, it's, it's Tiff Eagle and, you know, they change them all the time to keep the grain out, but you can't help it here in South Florida. All right. Um, let's now go over again. So as far as I'm going to talk about some of the guys that I'm, I think I'm going to pick because I'm not going to go too crazy this week as far as trying to figure out because I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I usually don't have more than seven on a week. That's high. Six, five is average. But you know what? I'm going to do eight players this week. Wow. Because I don't, again, normally I have time to do this and I don't have a whole lot of time and I want to get my picks officially on the air. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to have Cole as, since he's the lowest odds at 25 to one, I'll, I'll make him my top choice. So talk. So Cole, again, he just looks like this is a really good fit for him, this golf course. It is, and and you know what he he lives there locally again, and he's used to those greens. I mean, you got to, you know, how we talked about Paspalum, which is a horrible grass to putt. Um, it's sticky and it doesn't, it's ne never putts true. Um, I mean, that's why you see these guys in Mexico last week looking at a putt and going, "How could it break that way when it didn't break that way coming back?" And and they they just never putt true. They look beautiful, but they're really hard to to putt. Eric Cole loves. Florida greens. It's what he's grown up with. He puts them really well. So he's, he's definitely someone to look, look for. All right. And then I'm also going to uh, look, even though I'm going to take one guy that does not fit the stats and that's going to be Jaeger. So he's 35 to one. So I'll put 15 on Jaeger. I'll put 20 on Cole. So Jaeger is just, I, I think it's a good fit for him as far as timing not the course exactly, but let's keep in mind, he has done better all four times he's played here. He went from miscut to 78th to 48th to 14th. 
So he keeps getting better every time he plays here. He's made 21 of his last 22 cuts. Wow. And he's finished third in two of his last three events, including Mexico last week. So I just think this is a good time to take him, even though it may not be the perfect course um, uh, for him. But that's not always the case. It doesn't like that. You were just joking, but no, it sometimes it just doesn't matter. If you're just playing well, you're playing well. That's just and right. and, and he 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 seems to 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 know how to play the golf course now because he's playing it better and better every time he gets there. Well, and I think the point that you just made, which is the key, is that it's all about how you're playing now, how your game is now. I mean, as much as we talk about which courses suit and you know and you know, weather and tea times. But if you're playing well, you can overcome an awful lot. Okay. Now, uh, the other player I'm going to take, like I said, I'm taking Justin Rose. So I'm going to put 10 on Rose at 55 to 1. Rose um, actually has a pretty good record here. He has four top 15s in seven appearances. Um, Three of those are top fives. And he is trending in the right direction. He was 11th last time out at Pebble. So he's had some time off. But, yeah, we were just going over the stats. Stats seem to favor him here, too. And let's keep in mind, Justin Rose plays well on tough golf courses. That's true. I mean, he is a U.S. Open winner, so no question. And, he, you know, and he's got that gold medal on that hard golf course at Gil Hands down south. So he he definitely – and he's got a great scrambling game. And I like his golf swing. So he he's one that can – even though he hits it right to left, he's really good at fading it when he has to. So he's definitely someone that – should be looked at for sure. Uh, I'm also going to, like I said, I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put, uh, I, I, he was almost not on my pick because I don't usually do eight, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to add Alex Noren. Um, he's 55 to one. I'll put 10 on Noren. Again, he was fifth in 2022. That was the last time he played here, did not play last year. He also has another top five out of five appearances. I'm surprised he hasn't played here more often because the golf course seems to fit his game. Uh, he's made nine straight cuts. With two top fives, so and, and believe it or not, even though he has ten wins on the European Tour, he has never won a PGA Tour event. Hmm. So, and that's actually interesting because trend-wise, I'm going to throw another couple of trends at you regarding that. If you look at it, um, uh, five of the no, actually three of the last five winners made this their PGA maiden uh, victory. So three of the last five, um, six of the 17 winners all time broke their maiden here. That's 35% of the winners on this golf course have actually uh, never won before on the PGA Tour. And for anybody that we've talked about that has won before here, keep this in mind. No one has ever won this event at PGA National twice. How about that? We don't have any wow. two-time winners. So, wow. all right. I'm also taking Bo Hostler at 45 to 1. So I'm going to put 10 bucks on Hostler. Hostler, 16th in 2022, his last appearance. That's his best appearance out of three. And he has he went from 128th last July to 64th now. He's made 14 of 15 cuts with 12 top 30s, four top 10s, and a runner up at the Zozo. He's coming off a twenty fourth wow. at the Genesis, so he's playing lights out. He's never played this good before in his life. So that's really good. That's that's interesting. I didn't know that. Someone to watch. Uh, also, I'm going to put ten bucks on Gim. We talked about Gim. This seems to be a good fit uh, for Gim too, which is nice uh, because Gim. If we take a look at his, uh, uh, let's see. If we take a look at his uh, history and his form here, um, matter of fact. Jared took Gim last week, and I'm surprised he didn't take him this week because in his last three events, Gim has finished 13th, 12th, and 8th. So he's got three straight top 15s, and here's the here's probably the reason he's not taking him. But I'm going to – and I already knew this, but I was taking him anyway. He's played here three times. He's never made the cut, and his combined scoring is 20 over par. But – in those three years he played here, he was the 234th ranked player, the 238th ranked player, and the 454th ranked player. He's obviously a better player now. He has experience on the golf course, and he's playing the best that he's played over a three-event stretch. 
So yeah, there, and we, we, you know, we, we should, the stats say he should play well here, but yes, if you are, again, I'm just guessing maybe that's why Jared decided not to take him, but it, it, you know, that's something too to consider is that you might just say, you know what? I just can't take him. He's never made a cut there. And I don't know how you're going to go from never making a cut to winning. So I can understand yeah, if you want to do that. It makes it hard because you, you know, you have this as a player, you, you when we talk about it, you, you either like the course or not, but but he's, he's playing well. The only difference is last week, the last few weeks, there wasn't that much water. Yeah, Whereas true. this one, there's a, you know, the trouble is when you hit one offline here, it, it's, you're dropping. It's, you know, it's stroke and distance. Well, <laughs> that's, that's the reason. I mean, it, I, I might have changed it, but the stats are good for him as far as he hits the ball straight. He was good at the, what is it? I think both the scrambling and the sand saves, I believe. So he was, I think, at yeah, all. Yeah, that's of them. true. Yeah. So, um, all right. Anyway, next up, uh, I'm going to put 10 bucks on Maverick McNeely again. I just think McNeely is starting to get close, and we know uh, he's got the game. Um, and he's a player, too, that um, could actually be involved in uh, your insider report, which I want to go over before we end the show, because McNeely is somebody that's really had to come back as well. Um, but he's starting to get his game going again now. And he was sixth uh, the, the, uh, the week before or two weeks ago and then 13th last week. So he's got two good events coming in and he's played here twice. He missed a cut once and he finished 11th in his first appearance. But I'm still surprised you're getting 80 to one in this field for Maverick McNeely because we know he's a very talented player. Yeah, that that's interesting that he's that high up because the first year he was working with um, – Alex Murray from Scotland, who's he uh, based in San Francisco and has basically taken Mav from a teenager, actually from, I think he even started in playing golf. So he's had him all that time. And then um, Mav met um, a, an LPGA player that lived in Vegas and was working with another coach. And so he dropped Alex and so they could work together and, and he moved to Vegas. So he moved away from California and um, it changed his game totally with this new coach. And and uh, we all thought it was a mistake because we've known him and Alex and I think Alex is a brilliant teacher. And I thought, I mean, how do you go with someone that's had you since you're a kid and then try to change to different technique when you've just made it on the PGA Tour? So it, we thought it was a mistake, but this caused an injury and then he had at the new swing, um, getting some extra power then caused an injury with his shoulder. He had to have shoulder surgery, which turned out good because he met the rehab, his new girlfriend at the oh, rehab. She was a rehab go. instructor, but um, so helped him with his rehab. And I think she travels, probably travels with him and helps her now with his rehab or working on it, you know, with his, um, his uh, injury. And, uh, but he went back to Alex at the beginning of the year and, uh, worked with him last winter and we thought, you know, he's going to have a better year this year. And sure enough, it's the first couple he had to work his way in, but I think he's going to have a great year. Well, uh, this could be a good opportunity for him in this week of this field. Then the other player is uh, Novak. Like I said, I'll put five on Novak uh, because his odds are 110 to one, but Novak um, is, is, I don't think he's ever had back-to-back -to -back top 10s in his career on the PG tour. So he finished eighth, in his last two events, he does have a KFT win, and he's also been better in all three events here. He was 57th. I, actually, he was 57th, miscut, but he was eight over par the first time, five over par the second time, and then he finished 29th last year at three under par. So yeah. he's been getting better here, and he's got the back-to-back -to -back top 10s. So that combination and a big number, I figured why not. And uh, we saw him on the stats there, too. So um, he may not be a, a bad long shot. Because, again, I don't think anybody is a bad long shot, to tell you the truth. Anybody can win. So, all right. So all right. those are my picks. I've given uh, Jared's pick. So who, give us a couple of players that you're thinking for now for your one-and-done option uh, that we've gone over this. Uh, who, who, who do you think you're going to who, who consider here? Well, I was going with Lowry until we heard about his stats. So now I'm really backing off of that. And Fitzpatrick, I was going to keep him for later on in the year too, but he doesn't seem to get off to a very good start. So I liked it. I liked Stephen Yeager. I've liked him.
from quite a while. So I, I'm, I may go with him. I've already taken JT Poston. I, I don't like to go with someone as high up as Russell Henley, but Rus what are the stats on Russell again? Well, Henley uh, has won here before. Let's see, he's got six top 25s out of nine, uh, three top 10s, two top fives and a win. The win was in 2014. He beat Rory that year in a four-man playoff in 2014. And this is also something that might work in his uh, favor. Um, in his last six visits here, he's been better each time. Miscut, 43, 24, 20, 8, 3. So that's his last six appearances here. And, and keep in mind, two years before that stretch, he won. So he won. Then he defended his title. Didn't do much. Then the trend started from miscut all the way to eight, to third. So he's trending in the right direction. And he's somebody that, based on that trend, is not exactly a bad uh, idea. Um, but again, nobody's ever won this event twice. So keep that in mind. Maybe he'll, maybe he'll be the first. Because he what, is, what he, about the last few weeks? What did he do the last three weeks? Um, the last three weeks, he's finished 24th, 58th, and 4th. The 4th was that Sony Open when it looked like he was actually going to win that week. And then he didn't play well down the stretch. And he missed out on the three-man playoff um, by, I think, a stroke. But then after that, he finished 58th and 24th. Hmm. So... But that's Russell like Henley. Stephen Yeager's odds were pretty good too. I mean, he looked like he's playing well. I think you got to still trend how you're playing at the moment. Yeah, Yeager. Usually that means you're putting well. Yeah, Yeager definitely has a, a better trend, current trend, and um, course trend though. You know, still favors Henley, but Yeager's playing better right now. Uh, let's see, Mitchell. Uh, is playing better. He's got four top 30s in his last six with one top 10. He's, he's won here before. Berger. Now, Berger, um, also a part of your insider report because Berger, tell us a little bit about, because Berger and Woodland are playing this week and uh, they're very good on this golf course. Berger's got three top fives out of seven, a runner-up in 2015. And his last four years, he finished fourth, didn't play, fourth, and didn't play. So not sure. I know why he didn't play last year, but I'm not sure why he didn't right. play a couple years ago. Um, he hasn't played as well as Alatoris on the comeback. 28th, miscut 39th. Um, and then, by the way, Woodland, I only bring him up also because of uh, he's coming back from that brain surgery. He's made all nine cuts here. Nine for nine, four top fives, excuse me, four top tens, and he was a runner-up in 2017. But in his return, he has three missed cuts and a 39th. You would think it's going to take Gary Woodland a little bit more time to get back into the swing of things. No pun intended. But it is incredible how how quickly, and even the fact that Zella Torres has come back at all to play on the injury. But it just shows you, nowadays with medicine, you can't say what we, we, we've said before. Everything's different nowadays. And it looks like Zella Torres uh, has bucked the trend, so-called, of uh, being able to come back from that injury. I, I would have, I mean, I thought Jared was crazy taking him. I thought he'd take him a good year and I didn't know if he'd ever really recover because, um, but I looked at the changes in his golf swing and um, I, I really like it. What they've done is, I mean, he was like crazy arm speed and ball speed was fantastic. And that's why he could hit it so far with being, you know, kind of lean and strong. He's one of those strong wiry guys. And but I and it was such talk on his back that I it was only going to be a matter of time before he hurt himself and pretty seriously. So, you know, the first time he had surgery and then he injured it again. And now that his back is fused, I didn't think he'd be able to come back. But I looked at his golf swing. The changes he's made are brilliant. Um, he slowed his swing speed down to 106, but he's still far enough that he's competitive. But I kept his ball in play because of it. You know that extra that extra 10 yards of the 10 miles an hour gave him that extra 15 yards but it also created you know a, a big span of how crooked he could hit it so he's, he's actually got to control but the main thing is his putting what he did was once he was injured he really couldn't 
um, spend that much time hitting. So they worked a lot on video, changing his swing by looking at it, what he needs to do. But with the putter, he changed to the, what we call the broomstick, the long putter broomstick. And that's made an enormous difference because when he, the thing, good thing about the broomstick is that you're, you, you're very pendulum because you've got it really upright. And, and you kind of, with the new technique, this is another thing we talk about with coming back because of this new technical stuff that they have with these putters where they square themselves at impact if you just let it flow. Okay. Um, is an absolute enormous improvement for him because his short putts, I mean, he made me nervous watching when he was two feet from yeah, the hole. Yeah. I mean, and he would take it back shut and the ball would just go straight left. And then he started to yip it and then he would shove it. And, and, and it was really a problem. And I didn't think that he could overcome that. Well, now with this putter, this, this putter, you just basically take it back and it squares itself at impact. And so it has made an enormous difference in his short game. And so with the change in his golf swing and with this, I should have paid more attention because when Jared did it, I thought I'm, we were on, on our bet. I was like, great, have him because he's, he's no way he can come back. Yeah. But I, I then I had to study to see how he was doing that well. So now I can see why. It's amazing. I mean, again, it's uh, it's great. It's uh, you know it it because having a player like him not be able to return to form at such a young age would have been really bad for the game. So it's great that uh, yeah he, he's and the funny the thing is is I I I took him. I know you weren't on the show, of course, but I took him in the in the event at Genesis that week, and he was fifty to one. I was like, man, I'm gonna keep. As a matter of fact, I put I put. I, I bet twenty five bucks on him at fifty to one. So I had a thousand dollars on him. I love it. And I lose because Hideki Matsuyama decides to have a course record on Sunday. <laughs> Otherwise, Zalatoris is winning that event. Uh, you know, wow. so because right. I know List and him were tied and stuff, but you know, Zalatoris was still going this way. List was going that way, and right. you know, Zalatoris would have wound up winning. But yeah, um, but the but the problem now is is that you're not getting fifty to one anymore. Right now it's back to probably twenty five to one. It'll probably be twenty five or thirty to one next week at Bay yeah. Hill. So yeah, yeah, it's uh, a good course for him. Um, okay, so you know what? I, I might have I might even talk myself myself into taking Henley and one and done because I don't take Henley very often myself, and, I, and sometimes he's not even a player to take in one and done. Yeah, but it does. But and and the only reason I because I was thinking I was saying you know what. This has been such an untrendy year. Like everything has not gone trend wise. That maybe this is exactly what's going to happen. He'll be the first one to win two times since nobody's ever done it. I can see that trend being broken because every other trend has been broken this year. Watching golf, so I might actually think of taking Henley myself. Um, let's go over some other ones that uh, you might. I mean, Minwoo Lee is playing this week, but he was twenty six last year, so he has played here. But his trend line is going the opposite way, so he's going. He, yeah, I'm. He, I'm gonna wait on him until. I mean, he's he's again. You know, he he's game shank turned around when he went to the broomstick. But um, I I I don't know. I think it takes him a while to warm up. Uh, Tom Kim will be playing it for the first time. I know Jared was thinking of taking Kim, um, so he might be in an option for for Jared at one and done. Uh, he's been playing pretty well. All all top thirty fives in his last three. But no top fifteens. But again, it's very he's hard. Not played, he's not played there though, has he? No, and that's a trend. Matter of fact, if you look at it, uh, the average number of appearances prior to winning this event, and out of fifteen, I didn't use seventeen, and I didn't use the first. I think one or two because obviously that doesn't make any sense to do that. But um, it, the average number is only four point three. And it was 3.3, I believe, until Kirk won last year when his 12th appearance. But this is interesting. So even though it only takes three or four times to win here, Ernie Els is the only player to win here making his first appearance. And he did it in 2008. So, And that was the second year the event was played at PGA National. So, Plus he knew the course very well because he lived there at the time. Okay. So there you go. So being in your first uh, venture out to PJ National probably not going to work in your favor, but hey, Eric Cole almost won last year, so. But again, he lives there, so. There you go. 
So, so if you know the course, you, I mean, you have to know the golf course. So let's see. Out of the uh, out of the first timers, let me see. You've got Kim, um, and he doesn't live there, does he? Uh-uh. Uh, Rasmus he lives, in, Hoj- he lives in Texas. Rasmus, uh, Nikolai's brother's playing this week. Rasmus. Oh, wow. And keep in mind, Rasmus, who just missed out on a full time PGA Tour card, he'll be a he'll be a full timer next year for sure. Um, he has eleven straight top thirties. This is over in Europe. Eleven right. straight top thirties, eight top twelves, five top eights, two top fives, and a runner up. So he's red hot over in Europe. Um, so he's never played here before. And let's see if I notice anybody else. That is of significance. That has never played here before. No, I don't think so. So that's about it. Um, well, the trouble is, I talked Koi God last week and he let me down. Nikolai, he's been, he's yes. Been play, yeah, Nick, and he's been playing well. But um, I think both of them have, they met in, they, they, uh, they rented a place down in Florida. So they may be playing there every day right now. So, um, I, and maybe Rasmussen might be because um, Nikolai played in, in uh, Mexico, but that that fate, you know, as long as you know the golf course, I mean, if they're playing there every day because he's trying to acclimatize himself to the weather and the the time change, so that might alleviate a little bit. But it's nothing like playing in competition to learn the course. All right, other players. Uh, let's see. Uh, Post on has never had a top twenty five here in six appearances, but um, he's red hot. He's got twelve top 25s in his last 15 eight top 10s three top fives and a runner up uh let's see on who is one of jared's picks uh two top fives out of five so he has played well here before he has three top 20s in his last five with two top fives and of course the playoff loss when i picked him that week at sony and he couldn't win uh let's see who else uh ben on might be somebody i i i I, I mean, I was, I'm a little bit worried with all that water because he's he's gained that distance. I just don't know if he can control it. But I do like his game. I mean, I like that his new putting um, is is improved and and he's he gained 15 to 20 yards, which this last winter, which is enormous. Uh, also, Connors, uh, who's made 12 straight cuts, is 45 to one in that range. And Connors uh, played the golf course twice, made one cut, 59th, and that was back in 2018. He's only won twice on the PGA Tour, both at the Texas Open. Uh, mentioned Hostler, mentioned Norin, uh, mentioned Rose. So yeah, so those are the ones uh, that we talk that we talk about there. Uh, what do you what do you think about? By the way, I'm surprised Billy Horschel doesn't play this golf course better. He's got four top 20s out of 11, just one top five. But he's he's gone from starting the 23 season at 18th in the world. He's now 94th. Wow. So he's really uh, lost his game lately. Ricky Fowler has not played well uh, since winning. He was starting to play really well. He wins, and then all of a sudden he's not playing well again. Yeah, it took the pressure off, I guess. A he, has a, he does a lot of a lot of uh, corporate outings and corporate stuff. Okay, uh, Pendrith is somebody that I was thinking of, but you know he's more of a heavy hitter, and I wasn't sure about that. Um, but it's interesting. He 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 was finished in his last six: eighth, miscut; tenth, miscut; uh, <laughs> ninth, miscut. Wow. So if that continues, top ten. So yeah, um, that's funny. Well, and it, it's it's a golf course. Um, yeah, he he tends to hit a few offline. I mean, I like his game. I like his golf swing. Uh, it's it's probably not a good course. My, I was thinking. I look at that list. Keith Mitchell might be good here. Uh, yeah, Mitchell uh, has the win back in uh, let's see, it was about five years ago. And like I said, he's got four top 30s and six. He has, he has seemed to play better when the year begins. So he seems to play better at this time of year. So, yeah, if you're going to take Keith Mitchell on a one and done, you probably want to think about taking him something like this week. Mm-hmm. Um, this might even be the last good week to take him because, again, now the events are going to get a lot tougher and the fields are going to get a lot tougher. Right. And then it won't be early in the season anymore. 
So yeah, he's not a bad idea for one and done. Similar to Henley in that he's won here before, but maybe that trend will break this week, uh, like every other Brent, the trend has broken. Um, so uh, McCarthy is fifty to one. Uh, he's f missed four of six cuts here, but he does have a top five, and he's made eight straight cuts on tour. So uh, you would. Think I don't think Danny hits it far enough for that golf course. Okay, uh, Bazoon Hoot. Uh, and Glover are both around the same uh, number at around at eighty to one uh, number. Actually, Bazunhu has got down to fifty five to one. Wow, he's wow. dropped considerably. Um, Interesting. Let's see, Wallace uh, Hubbard, who uh, Jared's taken this week, has been playing better. He's made six, uh, all six cuts this year, Hubbard, wow. and he does have two top fifteens out of seven on this golf course. Um, Interesting. That's a, that's a good one, huh? Yeah. Um, his best finish was fourth at Pebble about a month ago. So, uh, yeah, again, Jared's going with On, Hubbard, Glover, Hogue, and Fitzpatrick as his picks. Dietrich's playing this week, but uh, he withdrew huh. from this event last year. Yeah, after I'm glad first I, didn't. Round. I almost took him last week. That would have been a killer. Yeah, it killed me. And he hasn't played this week. He hasn't played this tournament. Has he? Uh, he withdrew last year after the first round. Yeah, he so was... I don't think you need to you need to know the golf course. Um, and anybody else, by the way, that uh, uh, that you think we should be keeping an eye on regarding like an insider as far as players in general? Any anything out there? You just mentioned McNeely's in love, and I could just imagine that scene. He's sitting there in his chair. He's got his foot up, and in comes. This uh, this this uh, uh, trainer, and he puts his eyes on him, and it's probably like love at first sight. I can just imagine <laughs> how that is. Well, I I think um, I, I, they look they seem really happy, which is nice. I mean, I've seen some some pictures of them, and they look they look good. And I think he needed someone like that. She's she's she can play golf, which they loved, but not you know not to the level of his last girlfriend and. And she's just supportive, which is nice. And when you have that and, and have someone that travels with you, it, it helps a lot. I wonder if she, uh, I don't know how that, how that industry works, but I wonder if uh, if, if if she was like, I, I, I wonder if they just, I'm assuming they just assign when someone comes in, all right, you're next, you go to this person to help them out. But I just wonder if someone like that stature comes in, They obviously they know it. So it must be like, you know, uh, somebody, I wonder if they just talk about it and then somebody just actually, you know, I, I just, I could see somebody being like, you know, I want that. L let me, let me help him. You know, I like golf, you know, uh, cause I, I, or this could be at a place that professional golfers or professional athletes go to. It's possible. I mean, I have no idea where he went to, to get his rehab. Well, I, I think, um, the definitely because of his stature, he had probably had someone that was a real expert in what in his shoulders or something. And, um, and it, you know, obviously the doctor and she's probably was one of the ones top that ones. is good for that, but not like top up, but they know that no. he needs special, special attention because of who he is. And, and, uh, and he sure got it. Know. Um, all right. So, uh, yeah. Anybody else that, uh, is in love or getting divorced <laughs> or, uh moving having a kid having no uh, not right now i mean i'm trying to think injury of, issues uh <laughs> it's all pretty quiet right now i think um it's nice to see uh gary back gary woodland i mean he's he's very popular with the players he's a nice guy and he's got a lot of kids and so i'm glad i'm happy about that and uh I don't know. Lucas Glover said he was going to focus more on his kids this year, so that makes me nervous about ever get. Um, yes. You know, he had some some marital issues late last last year because he wasn't around enough with his kids, and then got off to it. Then he changed to the tall putter, you know, the famous long putter, and turned his game around. And so this winter, he's he was really happy, and he said he was going to focus more on being. Um, um, I told I, I was listening to him on the PGA tour. He was on, and he was saying he was trying to be more of a father and go to all the games and and be that. So I don't know if that means it takes away from his game or it's good for him mentally. Well, I haven't decided yet. Well, here's uh, let's see. Um, uh, they're not. Oh wait, 
they're, yeah, they're not playing this week. But uh, how has Harris English been? Because um, he uh, he had surgery not too long ago. He he yeah, seems he to be. Yeah, he had uh, lab- He had um, a, a torn labrum. Okay. And I and I thought about him having a good year this year because um, that was very painful, and he was and every now and then it would cat. They said he would catch, and he'd hit like one crooked out of the blue, and he hits it long anyway. And um, so they finally said, you know, if you want to fix that, you're going to have to have surgery. So it, they, apparently it was a small tear, so it wasn't that big a deal. But when they went in there, he said now he has no pain. And um, the rec- recovery was harder than he thought. But I think that's why I, I took him as someone to watch. And I picked him up. I think I that's picked right. him on my team. Yes, you do. And then what about, I know you have uh, Scheffler. Um, what because Scheffler is going through uh, a putting change, technique change, right? He's yeah, he changed his putting. He went to a longer putter. They 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 broke it down and videoed it. And uh, I still don't think they actually have found the problem that I see on TV when I watch. And I'm only seeing it. I've only watched him live once at the Masters, and so I really couldn't tell there. But when I watch it on TV. He still has a little bit of a loop every now and then and hits it left of where he's aimed or it's in, you know, and it, like on a, um, especially on the short putts, it's kind of just a little bit shot at impact. And then um, they keep saying, oh, he has a funny follow through when he does it, but it's because it's shot. So I, 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 they did do one thing I agreed with. They did have him change his putter to a longer putter. So he's, he bends, you know, he's bends better from the waist or from the hips. But he, he, and he's fanning it open, what we consider like an, you know, an opening a door, fans open and then squares back up, which I like. I think that was, that's good for his stroke. I just hasn't gotten comfortable. And of course, the more people focus on it, the more, the worse it is. I mean, he feels like, like over 15 feet, he's a great putter. I mean, really good putter because he can let it go. And even if there is a loop, it kind of is absorbed you know and it's it's minute it's one frame if i videotape it on the tv i it's one little tiny frame um so and but it seems like it happens more on with, with the four footers when a little bit of a loop then you can't recover from yeah i'm actually uh i wanted to see what his putting might be looking like statistically speaking this year while i do that um justin thomas was also going through some changes and again everything looked positive up until genesis i have no idea what happened maybe it was being teamed up with tiger for the first two rounds maybe that threw him off oh definitely there's Uh, nothing worse than being paired with tiger yeah so that's something to keep in mind when you think because i'll i'll because i had the the, the round before the, the the tea time before Tiger and Tiger, uh, if you get people used to, the guys used to just dread having to do that uh, and get that pairing because there's so much attention on Tiger that people are not really paying attention to you. And the, like if you played, the, if you were the group ahead, people would be running up, get trying to get a spot ready to watch. And it's it's not just Tiger. It's the top, top players like Rory or, you know, the, that – that it that they're not paying attention to you and they run right when you're trying to tee off on the on the tee and it's it's really hard but playing with them is even worse because they root so much for that for tiger and and it, it's like they don't really care about you and it's it's hard it's it's no one likes to get paired with tiger and you know and they're friends and so tiger's always you know teasing him and so even though they're friends and they're used to playing together that still becomes a distraction that you should you should keep an eye on definitely playing with tiger is a distraction okay so you you better be playing well um you know and it's it's just hard it's hard playing with tiger okay well then i'll definitely and, and you were saying that the the tea time before that as well yeah okay so. yeah and it's the same and, and playing with rory is the same way too i mean rory's a lot easier it's nicer than tiger to play with um but it's you know if tiger moves off to the side of the green everybody moves with him and that you know you might have a putt to finish and it's really hard yeah i i could see that absolutely so that's definitely something to keep in mind out there is if you're thinking of taking a one and done player do not take him the week that he would be teamed up with Tiger Woods. 
Right. So, or I mean, if, every every time last year that that whoever was paired with Tiger, if I took a couple of one and dones in some of some of my team spot with our our deal, and when they were paired with Tiger, it was like ugh, forget it. Yeah, that's I, I'm going to keep that in mind, even though Tiger's not playing a whole lot, but. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll probably, you would think, now, why did he not finish up with the Genesis? Well, he said he had a cold. A cold. Okay. Because he seemed like or he was playing cold. okay. I mean, they said he didn't feel well. All right. But he was really cold that day. All right. So, yeah. Um, all right. And then, yeah, so uh, you would think we'll see him again at least one more time before Augusta. You would think. Well, he'll definitely play probably TPC or Bay Hill. He likes both of those. Okay, so maybe we'll see him next week. Um, by the way, Scheffler, I was looking up his stats. So last year, he was 162nd in putting. It's amazing that he could be that good and be 162nd in putting. Oh, and I this know. year, he's only up to 138th. That's terrible. So now a lot of that is because he hits so many greens too. I mean, that's one of the things that um, his coach was saying, you know, he, he gets all upset when he looks at the stats and he's pretty good at ignoring a lot of that. And, and he, he actually can brush it off more than like, if I was putting that poorly with the short putts, it would be affecting me when I'm over a short putt. Sure. But his coach said the one thing he's good at is just brushing it off. But when he did say to him, look, the reason your stats are so high when everybody would ask him in the media tent is you hit so many greens, but they're not far he's away. Not hitting it that close. He's yeah. hitting at 18 feet, which means it's, you know, it's hard from eight. He was hitting it between 18 and 21 feet this year so far, whereas normally is 18 to 28 feet. You're not expected to make many of those. Yeah, I would definitely look at um, the putting stats that show you what they are in proximity. Uh, Correct. I wonder what they would be. So, yeah. Yeah. I'll take a look I mean, at the those. guys that lead the birdie list are usually the best putters because you, you know, I mean, it, putting, you could admit, you know, you'd be on the fringe of every green and in, in one putt, you know, and so it looks like your stats go down or you have a great scrambling game. So your putting is low. But when you look at how many birdies you make, no matter, you don't have a, I mean, except for the par fives, you don't have a lot of tap-ins. So what number would I look at would, inside 10, 5 to 15? Inside 10. Inside 10. All right, let's see. Last year, I just want to see what last year's was inside 10. For yeah, it'd be interesting life. to see. Maybe inside 15 feet. Because uh, I always thought when I played on tour, the best putters were the ones that made 15 footers. Because it's not a, it, it's not a common one to make. Well, you know, it's probably five out of ten odds. Jeez, not good. One hundred and seventy-sixth inside ten. Who's that? Uh, Scheffler last Nutty? year. Well, there you go. So, all right. Uh, so. As far it as it was leading in the ten, it was leading in ten or fifteen feet. Uh, this year, or yeah. last year. Either way, I want to know who it is so I can Let's see who's the best putter. Inside fifteen feet, or are we? Uh, Eric Cole's got to be one of them. Uh, do, 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 do they have an inside fit? They have. Let's see. They've got three putt avoidance, ten to fifteen. They've got three putt avoidance, fifteen to twenty. They've got. Uh, total three putts, 15 to 20. Uh, I don't see anything. Oh, wait, here we go. Putting from uh, putting from 10 to 15 or 15 to 20 or 5 to 15. Which one? 10 to 15. Okay. This is this year. Who do you want to know? Who's the best? Yeah. All right, let me move this over here so everybody can see it. Uh, Nick Dunlap, but only 11 attempts, 72%. Wow, that's good. Um, Aaron Baddeley obviously is one of the best putters well, on tour. Aaron's the best putter on tour. Uh, Nikolai. Interesting. Cameron Champ. I would have wow. that. Sam Burns. Yeah, Sam's a good putter. Cameron Champ's a shock. Ludwig. 
Ludwig. <laughs> Maverick, 21st. Huh. Harris English. We won't be seeing Turtle Hat's name on this list anymore. No. Minwoo. There yeah, you go. Min There's Shane Lowry. Person. There's your boy, Shane Lowry, again. Yeah. Will Zalatoris. Look at that. So, yeah. Will See, that's his putting seem better since she's got that new putter. I like it. Eighth. Who would have thought it? All right. So, I'm probably my, – my top one and done options I'm thinking that might be Henley, Cole, and Rose. So those are the three guys I'm thinking about, Henley, Cole, and Rose. And uh, you are leaning towards Jaeger? I'm leading I'm leading Stefan Jaeger, or I may go Henley too. I'm starting to like it, Henley. So Henley, Jaeger, you still got Lowry on the list? Yeah, still I'm still leaning. Anyway, Mitchell, him. you want to put Mitchell on there? You were thinking about yeah, Mitchell? Yeah, just put Keith Mitchell there too. Okay, so there you go. So Lowry, Jaeger, Henley, Mitchell. And I've got Henley, Cole, Rose. We'll tell you the truth. Well, yeah. I'll pr you know what? I, you know, knowing me, I'll probably end up doing Justin Rose because I'm not going to take him too often this year. No, I agree. So this might be a week to take him. But um, all right. Anyway. Uh, all right. That's going to wrap it up. See, I mean, Jared and I usually get done in 45 minutes. So it's you. Uh, <laughs> it, we just did an hour and a half. Uh, uh, but we only talk every once, uh, every couple months. So that's the reason we have a lot to catch up on. And it was awesome getting another insight, especially from a hall of fame golfer, Jan. So appreciate it as always. And we're talking off the air about a whole other bunch of different things we're doing project wise for the channel. So stay tuned for that. You'll be seeing a whole bunch of new stuff soon. So we can't wait. And, um, yeah, I'll, uh, we'll definitely talk to you again for the masters. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll definitely. be talking to you for Valspar first. So, yeah, Valspar's first. Yeah, yeah and I'll so, be at that event. Yeah. And uh, maybe cover next week if I'm going to do some work up there, over there at uh, yep. at, at the golf course in St. Pete. At, uh, Is it Valspar um, Masters? The Valspar's after. Oh, that's right. No, it's uh, Valspar's after players. Okay. So yeah. it's Houston, Texas, then the Masters. So. Yeah. Um, so that, and so, I'm going to play it. I'm going to go to the Masters. Oh, well, then we'll have to definitely um, figure something out about that. Uh, yep. 21st. So, yeah. So we'll be talking to you again in uh, uh, the week of the Valspar. And then we'll talk to you again a few weeks after that for the Masters. And like I said, uh, yeah, uh, if you're going to be at the Masters, we're going to have to think about something. I know there, of course, we're not going to be able to do anything like on ground, but we'll have to think of something. So. Uh, yeah. Maybe we could do something. Uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, anyway, Jan, appreciate it as always. Uh, and uh, we will talk to you again uh, in a few weeks. Okay. Thanks for the help on this one. Oh, yeah. Well, you, did, you, you did all the work. <laughs> all right. <laughs>